Okay, let's look at some hoop materials. Steel, um, as far as gauge, 14 gauge is probably the thinnest you ought to look at on a large structure. The lower the number, the thicker the, the, the uh, pipe wall, guys. So, you know, 12 would be a thicker than a 14 gauge. Um, we usually sp space these four feet apart, but, you know, remember, a strength in the steel is a combination of diameter and wall thickness. That you're paying for weight when you buy steel. Uh, you can use top rail tubing on small houses. This is just a little 12 foot house. Um, that's the chain link fence top rail, 16, 17 gauge, very thin. You do not want to use it on a big house. It, has, it doesn't have that much strength. Uh, there are quick hoops benders that are available through Johnny's um, that you can bend your own pipe. Um, we did successfully with this. Pretty neat if you like to, if you like to do your own. And Todd Hanley has a bender. This is the first model, not, not, not a later one, that you can use to bend the uh, uh, square tubing. Um, those plans, I guess, uh, Alan, they're still on your website. At the Kerr Center, uh, they have a, uh, the plans on making the Hanley house or bending your pipe with his bender. Square tubing, very strong. I mean, the steel is strong. I really like the, the looks of it. And the nice thing about square tubing, you can attach things to it very easily. I mean, it's flat. You can put a piece of wiggle wire, you know, base on it. Okay, PVC, this gentleman's got it right. It's not very strong, but if you put a, uh, some type of bracing uh, in it to hold it together, that's what you need to do. Uh, he's, he's had experience. Uh, our poly pipe house is only 14 feet wide. I wouldn't want to go any, any, uh, any wider with it, but as long as it's arched and you've got the, the plastic applied on it firmly and tied down, it's very strong, and I've never had a problem with this blowing down. Okay, in wall. Um, gosh, you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, this is steel. I love steel. This is really overkill, but uh, I like it when it doesn't rot, okay? And now, the issue with steel, you've got to have a cutting torch, or you've got to have a chop saw, you have to have a welder, you have to have a drill. You've got to have a few more tools, correct, than you would if you're just using uh, wood, timber, lumber. All right, this is a laminated, uh, treated wood. If you're uh, certified organic, this is not permissible. Uh, you, need to, you need to figure out some other way, use some oil on it or something, uh, linseed oil, something to treat it. Uh, but laminated gives you a lot of strength. It's very, the, this is one of our first walls that we put up, well, actually the third wall on the third house, but very functional. It's still in use today, or it's still out there. The house is not used much, but uh, uh, the structure there, there is. Um, this is a, a sea purlin, um, possible there. Anytime you cut a, uh, one of these sea purlins, you weaken it, um, you know, but this is an option. This is certainly an option, and uh, when, when they're curved like that, it's gonna be stronger than just a piece of plate steel. Okay, when you install your, your post, you've gotta have some structural members, some posts on your end wall, if it's a permanent house, okay? If you want strength. If you don't, the darn thing's gonna blow down. So this is Steve, uh, he's using the, the old, you know, um, packing uh, rod there to compact the, the clay soil. Okay, concrete is really the, you know, the ideal thing to use. Some people just dry, dry pack it. Uh, you know, if you're really a purist, you want to mix it and then pour it, but hey. But uh, when you do this, um, well, you just want to make sure that you've got enough moisture in that that it'll, that it'll set up properly. Okay, use the door. Um, get what you pay for again with the door. We, we use a commercial door or we, build the, we take the ones that we can purchase off the shelf and we'll strengthen them. Uh, different types of doors. This is the, uh, the sliding. Uh, if, you're, if they're mounted on the top, it's much better. Obviously, there's not any soil that's going to get up there. Uh, at the bottom and that track, wow, you know, it'll fill it with soil. You'll have to clean it out. But I like these, they are a little more expensive to put up, but um, it, they're pretty convenient to, to open and close. This is the simplest door you can make. It's a, excuse me, a scissor door. Um, a chain or a, a bolt run through the two uh, door components through the end hoop. You just open it, I mean, it's like a scissor, okay? Very cheap, not very strong, but it, for, for small structures, it's very good. I've seen them on larger structures. It scares me to death because there's just not any structural member uh, strength there uh, for that on a large house. 
the curtain door, the structure is strong, but the door is just cheap. You get, again, what you pay for. It, run, it operates just like the, uh, the, the vents on the side of the house. Roll it up, roll it down. Um, when I was in Israel, I, uh, I noticed that the, uh, some of the Israeli growers were tacking the, uh, the side of the, the film to the column, and they were using these little uh, griff clips and then running a nail through it, and you just pull it on and off by hand. It's kind of a little time-consuming, but it's cheap. It's a way to make it happen. Um, just understand the limitations of the system. Okay, uh, hinge doors, wow. Uh, this is great. If you want a, something that you don't have to, to lift or to personally remove and put back on and bolt back on, you just open it up and close it, right? It's super, but my goodness. And I think Leon will attest to this. So it's difficult to make, difficult to hang, and it's expensive, right, Leon? Okay, uh, Penn State University has this type of a door. It hinges to the top. Um, problem with that, if, you, if, you did, if it did catch some wind and you were standing close by, you can imagine what would happen. But it does have un, unhindered access to that. All right, so we, we're looking at these detachable end walls so for movable structure or, for, or if we want to drive through a permanent structure. Uh, this is our little portable end wall. It sits on a piece of uh, angle iron to keep it from... Uh, from blowing in at the base, it hooks it to two bolts at the top. It's pretty slick for the, you know, if you want to make your own, if you want to just use some uh, wood. Okay, Deta attaching your, um, your uh, frame to the ground, various ways to do this. This is uh, Brother Leon here. Um, he's using a, a chain, and that chain has got a little bit of a, it's got a, a hook or a little, uh, what do you call it, a yoke on the bottom of it that'll, that, that will bite into the concrete and won't pull it out. And we're not going to pour that concrete all the way to the top. We're going to leave it six inches or eight inches under the ground. So when we run a disc over that area, we're not going to tear up our brace or tear up our, our anchor. We can just bury the, uh, the, the chain in the soil, dig the soil out, pull the chain up, and attach it to our frame if we need to, you know, we need to uh, get it out of the way and hide it. And you can see there how it's um, attached to the frame just with a bolt and a washer and that. Okay, this is another... Uh, Example how they, they uh, fit right up into the frame, the end walls. You've got a little post there, and then you uh, attach them to the top uh, with some hardware. Not a bad deal. Okay, uh, max venting. When you design, if you want to custom design it, think about as getting as much ventilation through there. And, if, and again, if, if this is for a permanent house with a permanent end wall, but it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's open enough to where you can get a small utility vehicle in there. Uh, different materials for the end walls. Uh, the sheeting, this is PVC or polycarbonate, expensive, but isn't that nice? Low maintenance, and you couldn't afford to put, put it over your whole house. I mean, I guess you could if you've got, you know, deep pockets, but um, I like this because the end walls take a lot of abuse. It's kind of like the door. For uh, removable end walls and doors, I like the ripstop plastic. This stuff, it's hard to run your hand through it. You I mean, you really got to uh, whack it to get it to tear. And it'll last a year or so longer than this, the regular clear poly greenhouse. I do not like to removable in walls. I prefer not to use regular uh, uh, six mil plastic on it. It just, when you lay them down on the ground, it's, it just rips too easily. It, it'd be better if you had something like this. If you could spend a few more dollars to do that and cover at least your doors with this, if they're removable doors. 